Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness.
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense. And may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Our lesson for this day comes to us from Epiphany, the season of manifestation, the season that we end Christmas and end in turn towards this new season where God will reveal God's self to the world. The traditional lesson for the Epiphany evening is the story of the Magi found in Matthew 2. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who was born king of the Jews? For he observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out and from there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left their own country, and they went to their own country by another road. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There's a saying that Jesus could not come if the old rules were required. For where in the world would we find three wise men? Especially three wise men who were wise to know that the light was not their own, but was pointing them to something else. Something that was obviously far greater for they traveled from a great distance, trusting that the star was going to lead them to something amazing, something wonderful. But they had a basic understanding of what they were going to find. You see it in the gifts that they brought. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, traditionally, we say that there were, you know, in the scriptures, it just says wise men from the east. It doesn't say how many, but traditionally, we have given them three in their different names based on their traditions. Melchior, Caspar, and Balthazar is one of them because there were three gifts. Now, if you remember the song, We Three Kings, it describes what those gifts were about. Gold was a royal gift. It was a mark of a king for only the king could have gold. If you had gold, it had to have been bestowed on you by the king. So obviously they knew they were going to see a king. Frankincense was used in temples in worship. 
No. It holds, he gets the attention of the God on high and makes the God not near. So obviously they knew they were find, not just finding a king, but also one that was divine. And oddly enough, they brought myrrh. Myrrh is best described as embalming fluid. It was a very pungent spice that was used to cover the smell of decomposition at that time. So a king and a god, someone that would die came God in sacrifice, as the song goes. Isn't it interesting that juxtaposition of a king who is a God that would be a sacrifice? The story speaks of when they stopped in Jerusalem for directions and talked to King Herod that when Herod heard this, he was frightened in all Jerusalem with him. The end of the story that we read was them having been warned in another dream not to return to Herod, they went by another road. And then a an angel goes and visits Joseph and says, get the child and the mother and flee for the life of the child is sought. And Herod went and slaughtered all of the young children in the area around Bethlehem. Because that's what the world does. The world doesn't give up power. The world doesn't like challenges to power. Let's face it, in our own lives, we see that. We like our routines. We like the status quo. We don't like to have to change. We would, like, we would like things to be, you know, kept pretty much even keel. Thank you very much. If the world needs to change, it's those other people that need to change. I don't have to. No, I don't want to. And especially those in power who are accustomed to power those who think of themselves as number one, well, once you get to number one, everyone kind of refers to the fact that you need to defend that spot. You know, really, when you get to number one, the drive to improve goes away. You put all of your energy on maintaining, defending. You see that in Herod. You see that throughout history. You see that, again, in our ways of not wanting our boats rocked. Other people need to deal with other people. And if other people intrude on me, then, well, that's a problem of a different nature. King and God and sacrifice. That's what Jesus was. A king whose glory was shown in giving away power and authority. God whose glory was shown in being here. The glory of a child that was born the glory of healing and feeding and tending and caring and the sacrifice. That's what was found by these wise men. Someone who would do that. The question is for all of us who claim to be Christians, who claim to follow Jesus Christ, what is our witness to power? 
what is our witness to systems and situations that use violence, that oppress, that intimidate? Herod was the perfect example of might makes right. Is that the example that Jesus gave us? Is that the way, the truth, and the life that he set out for us? Then again, he did tell us to take up a cross and follow. This king and God and sacrifice that was found by the wise men was a baby meek and mild, who would grow up to proclaim love and blessings to the poor and the downtrodden and those who mourn, who would heal and feed, call us to love one another, call us to love our neighbor as ourselves, call us to love our enemies, who would associate with anybody and everybody. And the only harsh words he had were those for those who use power over and against others. And reminded us just as whatever we did to the least, we did it to him. How will we manifest God's love now? How will we let that light shine? How will we seek to be wise and serve the one who was king and God and sacrifice? How will we follow this one who went to the cross to show us what God's love was about? Notice that God's love was about going to the cross, not about putting other people on it. On this troubling day, on this day of epiphany, what is made manifest? What light has been shine, shown? But more importantly, for us, for you, what will you do? How will you follow? this king, this God, this sacrifice? How will you take up a cross and follow? How will you let your light so shine? How will you make manifest the love of God in Jesus Christ and that grace and that glory and that mercy that was extended to you for the purpose of being extended to the world? Three hundred and sixty six times in scripture, we're commanded to not be afraid. For those who are afraid, may we be signs of sor a source of hope and peace. And for those who seek to make people afraid for whatever purpose and whatever reason, may we love them as Christ loved us. And remember that God loves you, and so do I. Amen.
Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that surpasses all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God.